well. It's cold as balls outside. So I'm in a hoodie and yoga pants. And I only did my makeup so I didn't look like I was dying. So you're welcome. Welcome back my fellow witch bitches. So for today's video I thought that I would do a little bit of uh, witch's lore kind of a thing. Um, it's more of a history lesson I suppose. We're gonna look into the history of Friday the 13th and some pagan lore with that and why it became so feared and considered bad luck. So I've done some research. I will um, drop below the articles that I was reading. And then at the end of the video, I think that I'll probably do another Witch's Roots unboxing. This came yesterday. So as we all know, Friday the 13th is at the end of this week, or today, if you're watching this on Friday, because I will probably drop this on Friday. In modern society, Friday the 13th is considered bad luck or misfortune or whatever you may consider it negative. It's considered negative all around. So this has not always been the case. A lot of this came with um, Judeo-Christianity. So when they started to kind of bump paganism out in Old and like Norse and Greek and all those religions out, this is how this started. And a lot of it has to do with suppressing feminine energy, which I will explain a lot more here in a minute. Before Judeo-Christianity, Friday was considered a feminine day. It was considered the Venus day. And when the patriarchal standards started to come around, it started to deem this as negative. So Friday was considered the day of the goddess. This day was considered a day to um, celebrate creativity, uh, admire beauty, celebrate wisdom, manifest powerful positive energy, and <clears throat> to nourish the soul. So these are all very positive things for Friday. If, uh, Friday was also considered a day to reflect on the days previous in the week and to relax and play and take in positive energy for the next few days. What we would consider the weekend, which is probably where our five day work week came from and where um, Saturday, Sunday became the weekend and how Saturday or how Sunday became Sabbath day or like God's day. The number 13 is also considered a feminine energy. It is considered to be the day of death and rebirth and uh, creativity, fertility, and blood. So these are all things that obviously in some way, shape, or form can be related back to a feminine energy. Every, death, obviously, it, everybody deals with death. But rebirth, women are the ones that give birth. That's feminine energy. Blood, we shed blood monthly. Hopefully not more than that, otherwise I feel so bad for you. I've been one of those. <laughs> we create life. So that also falls in with the rebirth. So creation and creativity, that's feminine energy. So there are 13 moon cycles and most females also experience 13 period cycles throughout a year. If you were in sync with the moon cycles, you would get your period over the new moon and then you would be ovulating over the full moon. Moon is also considered a great feminine energy. So all of these things just correlate back to that. So before patriarchal times and before Judeo-Christianity, when you had your period, it was considered you were had divine and magical powers. A woman was at their height of psychic ability at this point in time, and they were considered very wise and knowing 
when you're ovulating, you're considered very powerful because you have the ability to create life and form new. Patriarchal times is when we started to shame females for having their periods, which is something that we still face today. I, I know for sure that most females have been raised to like hide their tampons or hide their pads when they go to the bathroom to change it. I personally don't give a fuck anymore. I will talk about it all day, by the way. Um, I don't even use pads or tampons. I use a diva cup and it's life changing. This is something that we still face today where we are very shamed about having your period and like guys think it's gross and whatever and it's completely natural. It's obviously, it's 110% natural. If it wasn't for periods and ovulating, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so they're very important and it should not be shamed anymore and that's something that we as a society need to work on. And it's been around for far too long. So all of these factors, um, when Judeo-Christianity came around, they tried to twist it and make Friday and 13 both unlucky because they were considered very feminine energies and this was all an attempt to make their God instead of the feminine divine goddess, they wanted their God to be number one, to be the only God. So that they were trying to block out feminine energy, which is probably what, where we have a lot of problems with misogyny and everything now. That's probably where a lot of that comes from. Witches have often celebrated Friday the 13th because of the fact that Friday is, is a divine feminine power and then 13 is also a divine feminine power. So that makes this day the most, like one of the most powerful feminine energy days that you can craft on because they find this day so powerful and so meaningful for their practice, it has portrayed all the fear from Christianity and from modern society. Um, covens also often gathered in 13 members, which is another reason why. Like obviously they found 13 as the powerful number, but then it gets twisted from the other side of religion and they see 13 as a negative number because covens are something that scares them. So 12 is considered the number of completeness. There are 12 apostles of Jesus, 12 months in the year, 12 hours on the clock, 12 zodiac signs, 12 labors of Hercules, and 12 gods of Olympus. So all of those things that's considered complete. And then you have 13 which is considered the number for transition and change. So people saw that as a way to undo the completion, the completeness, undo the completeness. And they wanted to impress that upon people to recognize that 12 was supposed to be the complete number and 13 was not. 13 considered, was considered transition and change and we know people don't like change. In Old Norse lore, there, if there was 13 people sitting at a table, it was considered bad luck and was said to that one of the 13 diners would end up dying. And this also, um, Jesus also portrayed this in the Bible when um, reading about the Last Supper. So there's 13 people set at the table because it's Jesus and his 12 apostles. And he states that one of the 12 is going to betray him. And we know today now that that was true because Judas was at the table with Jesus. Made the number 13 a bad omen. For those things because it either meant death or betrayal. Today in modern society more than 80 percent of high-rise buildings do not have a 13th floor because of this. Hotels and hospitals often don't have a room 13 although I can say that that is not true for my place of work. We do have a room 13. Many airports don't have a 13th gate. This is something that obviously has been affecting modern society still to this day even though it's it, is very outdated. It's pretty much been a propaganda scheme from Christianity to strike fear into their followers about looking for the feminine divine or anything like that. In early Rome, Friday was also execution day, with, which is also another death omen. You mix the two, Friday the 13th, people think 13 people are gonna die, and then Friday was execution day, it was hangman's day. So, yeah, 
apparently Friday and 13th both have death omens too. But first and foremost, Friday is Venus Day, which is Feminine Energy Day. I know I said that already, but I want to reiterate that. So Friday equals Feminine Energy, and 13 equals Feminine Energy, with our 13 period cycles, 13 um, moon cycles. There's a lot more pros to the number 13 and to the day Friday than there are cons. I couldn't find very many actual negative reasons for why Friday the 13th is considered bad luck. Besides the old Norse myth about dying if there's 13 seated at a table, and then um, Jesus claiming that um, 13 people seated at the Last Supper, and one of them was going to betray him. So that those are really the only two things that I could find. I'm sure that there's plenty more out there, but yeah, it just, it's not very well founded. So, and because of this, pagans definitely still celebrate Friday the 13th. They find this day to be a strong day for manifesting and a strong, powerful feminine energy. And it's a, it's a great day to like really get creative when it comes to spell work. Italy actually considers Friday the 17th their bad luck day. So if that says anything, that it just kind of goes to show that there's not a whole lot of foundation behind Friday the 13th being really a bad omen. So, sorry you horror movie fans, 80 horror movies fans, to burst your bubble, but Friday the 13th is not bad. Friday the 13th is good. And if you are looking into starting your craft, it is a perfect day to start your craft. It is a good day to manifest and to be creative and learn wisdom and beauty and all those things also being Friday the 13th. And that's the tea on Friday the 13th. Also, do you like my sweatshirt? I ordered it off of Etsy. It's skeleton hands grabbing my boobies. So the company I ordered this from off of Etsy was Creative Corner LLC. It was $28 plus shipping and handling. So if you like it, I like it. It's really comfy. It's nice and loose, which I was barely, very worried about because I never know. I got this in an extra large. It's like a men's unisex sizing. So pretty true to size. I'm fairly extra large across the board. So yeah, but I like this. So yeah, now let's, uh, let's go ahead and put your roots unboxing. Here's our twine and our letter. The Spiral Goddess is the name of this box. So we got some beautiful book of shadows art, but it says the Spiral Sempaternal, Sempaternalis. An intuitive symbol of transformative spiritual development, the spiral generates uniformly and commonly within nature. It signifies natural cycles of life, death, and rebirth, metaphorically reflective of the personal journey to enlightenment. This is a super pretty piece of art. I really like it. It looks like our herb this month is hibiscus. So we got some art there for that. So this says that the magical properties of hibiscus are, ooh, it's a worldwide aphrodisiac. Hibiscus adds impressive assistance and magical workings to ignite passions and to inspire love for others and the self. Include in baths to enhance beauty and to provide sensual appreciation. Commonly prepared as a tea, tincture, or oil blend. Dried hibiscus easily lends its amorous qualities to concoctions and rituals of sex magic. If you're curious about sex magic, it is very powerful. I highly recommend doing a lot of research first. Uh, wearing a sachet aids in strengthening the spirit and refreshing on exhausted mind Refreshing and exhausted mind, cooling phonetic, irritable or resentful emotions. Concurrently, the herb dislodges lethargic blockages. Prepare a dream pillow to prompt prophetic dreams. Looks like I got a spell candle, a pink spell candle. So here's our spell candle. You know, the whole like beeswax looking stuff. 
Divine Goddess Mini Spell Candle. We have hand rolled the Divine Goddess Mini Spell Candle with the intention of promoting empowering, promoting empowering and passionate energies. As you allow the flame to dance before you, take the time to resonate on your unique gifts and how incorporating the Divine Feminine may catapult you to further growth. I think I got another necklace, which I love. I love these necklaces. So the back says, may the lady of the spiral show you the path. It's very pretty, I really like it. That is a typical symbolism for the goddess, is the spiral. So it's the lady of the spiral, pewter pendant with chain. The spiral goddess is a deep and meaningful symbol that most commonly represents the beautiful and internal divine feminine. This, this goes very well with our video today. It's all about feminine energy and feminine power. So I wonder if they did that on purpose with the 13th falling on Friday this month. So that's pretty cool. This symbol bestows the wisdom of growth and transformation shown through the sacred cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. It is a representation of our natural urge to grow and shed those things that do not serve our highest good. Oh, this looks pretty. I don't know what it is. Oh, what is this? Oh my gosh. Is it open? Oh, it does! This is so cool! I don't know what I'm gonna put in here. It looks like a, it's a shell. It's a box made out of a shell. So that's kind of what the top looks like. It's not focusing very well. That's what the top looks like. And on the side. And then it opens. It's like felt inside. You know what this would make a really good box for? would be to propose. Hint, hint. Hint, hint, Matthew. Just look for this box. There you go, there you go. So let's read about the, the shell box. Mother of Pearl shell box. To accompany these magical tools, we have included a Mother of Pearl shell box. This beautifully crafted box is a wonderful place to keep jewelry, stones, and talismans. As with any box that you may use for ritual purposes, state your intentions and place them within this box before storing items. Known for its stress relieving properties, Mother of Pearl has the ability to relax, soothe, and calm the emotions, allowing for a clear and stable energy to become prominent. And then we have our little baggie of hibiscus here. They're nice and pretty. I could probably steep this and make some hibiscus tea, but I think I already have some hibiscus tea bags somewhere. Looks like we got a stone. Oh, this is my birthstone. It's so dark compared to what I've always seen it. So this is some tumbled garnet. Okay, so the tumbled garnet. We have included this wonderful garnet for you to carry with you on your path. Garnet is a great companion when working to transform creative ideas into palpable realities helping to conjure manifestation after each intention. Also known for its prosperous energies, Garnet helps to achieve pleasure, pleasure through even the smallest achievements and made, made throughout your day. I have a ring with Garnet on it, but it's definitely a polished ring. It's not that dark. Then we have some Spiral Goddess Ritual Body Oil. We have created this beautifully fragrant ritual body oil with the intention of bringing the divine feminine into your aura and surroundings. As you work with this oil, release all previously damaging thoughts and perceptions, allowing yourself to open your third eye and increase positive and influential visualizations. We have enchanted this ritual body oil with hibiscus, vanilla, and jasmine oils. Ooh, this probably smells really good. Mm, yeah, it does. In addition, we have also included chamomile and hibiscus herbs inside your oil. You will find a Lemurian quartz set to personify oneness into your aura. We have also included a special mixture of our sacred feminine magical oil from our personal cabinet of witchery into making into the making of this ritual body oil. It says to start with a small amount of this oil on your skin, as some may be more sensitive than others. The base of this oil is a, is fraction coconut oil. And then I have some incense. Creative Balance Ritual Incense Sticks. These wonderfully fragrant ritual incense sticks were placed within this collection to bring balance and clarity into your, into your surroundings. 
As you allow the smoke from the incense to walk throughout your space, take a deep and intentional breath, allowing yourself to center your thoughts. That's this month's Rich Witch's Roots Box. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you maybe learned something about Friday the 13th and the feminine energy. And I hope that if you can, if you want to, go ahead and try and do a small spell on Friday or today, I guess this would be today. And um, yeah, let me know how it goes. So that's all I got for you for today. So if you like me and you like what you see, go ahead and give us that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Maybe they can be educated too on the feminine energy. So I'll see you later, witch bitches. Bye. So before Judeo-Christian, Christian, Judeo, the patriarchy, I'm going to say patriarchy so many times in this video. Oh my gosh. Patriarchal times or some form of patriarchy. That, Australia, this is not for you. Not for you. I know it smells pretty, but it's not for you. Okay, stop it. Australia! Well, my pink candle's a little messed up now. She just decided to take a bite out of it.